Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> Let me briefly talk about this George Groves, Carl Frotch rematch. Uh, this video is going to get a little bit touchy-feely, but I actually think it matters because judges will be scoring the fight. Also, the public will be scoring the fight. The first fight ended a bit messy. We want a clean resolution in this fight. Now, I know Carl Frotch is a fighter who makes adjustments. He is a fighter who learns as he goes along. A typical Carl Frotch fight has him finishing stronger than he starts, right? You'll notice in fights like the Andre Ward fight that Carl Frotch slowly figured out what his opponent was doing. Now, all of that said, after looking at that first fight, I like George Groves to win the second fight. I think George Groves has more talent than Carl Frotch. I think he is faster. I think he has the quicker reflexes. I think he has the faster hand speed. I think he's the better athlete. I think he has the faster foot speed. And I do believe he hits as hard as Carl Frotch. <clears throat> Here's the problem. Frotch has the experience and Frotch has the charisma. There's a charisma gap in this fight, and the charisma gap actually goes toward Carl Frotch. Let me point out, I understand that the world right now is a little bit upset with Carl Frotch. Doesn't make sense, because all Carl Frotch did in the first fight was get up off the canvas, stay in the game, and hang around long enough to start hurting George Groves. Now, whether you believe the referee should have stopped the fight or not, if Carl Frotch is there to win the fight, what else did you expect him to do? He comes out, he gets caught, he gets off the canvas. In my opinion, he fought like a champion, right? But understand, when a crowd is upset with a fighter, when a fighter is viewed controversially, Sometimes that's the biggest compliment the crowd can pay the fighter because there's passion there. The last thing you want is the crowd to be apathetic. The crowd's not. When it comes to Carl Frotch, fans are passionate. Right? Understand in history, you've had guys who were viewed as controversial. And then, of course, later in their careers, the adoration shined upon them, right? Think Ali, for example. Years ago, he was viewed controversially. But there's deep respect. He conjures up deep passion right now. I think we all know that Adrian Broner has a lot of talent, right? He's not loved. But at the same time, fans know who he is, right? Even after a loss, fans are looking forward to the next Adrian Broner fight because fans understand that he has something to offer. Fans are passionate about what he's doing. I believe that's the way it is with Carl Frotch. I believe Carl Frotch is one of the few guys in boxing who many fans would want to have a beer with, who, if you were in a pub, with your friends and you heard Carl Frotch was in the pub, you might want to swing by where he is just to hear what he's saying. Right? He's a guy who has a certain persona. He looks like he's a guy who knows his fans. Right? Who knows the lay of the land. Not every fighter with a belt has that. Right? Let me just say, some guys look like they're great guys. Right? Look like they're living role model type lives. Look like they're religious and 
they would never let you down. But yet, you kind of sense that they're too corporate to be interesting. Right? While you respect their fighting ability, you're bored by their personas. We want guys with swag. Carl Frotch has the swag. When Carl Frotch shows up for an interview, he can just show up with an open collar. He can lean back. You can tell by the way he talks to people like Johnny Nelson that he walks in and he feels comfortable as a member of the boxing community. Now, George Groves doesn't have that. Right? George Groves is a younger guy, calls himself the Saint, shows up looking like a choir boy with a shirt and tie for events. You know, looks like he's trying to be deferential on the surface while actually being disrespectful below the surface to his opponent. Right? George Groves is a guy who, quite frankly, you know, looks like a young pup compared to the older Carl Frotch. Now, why does all of this matter? It's because I'm telling you that the fighters we're passionate about, the guys with the reputation, the guys who you look at them and you remember three or four big fights they've had, the guys who have delivered for you in the past, the guys who, when you hear they're in a pub, you want to stop by and hear what they have to say. When you're surfing here online and you see that this fighter is making a prediction on a fight he's not even involved in, you want to hear what he has to say because you know he's not trying to sell you a toaster oven or a pair of sneakers. He actually has a real opinion, right? He's not going to give you some corporate gibberish that both guys are going to give 100%. He's actually a guy with a real opinion, right? That guy's Carl Frotch, and when the rounds are close, Regardless of what happened in the first fight, I believe that judges are going to lean toward the cash cow, the guy who's delivered in the past, the guy who's worn belts. They're going to lean to Carl Frotch. So what George Groves has to do, and I know it's going to sound touchy-feely and crazy, I understand no one's talking about this stuff, but I guarantee you if you go to a sports book and you're talking to gamblers with money on George Groves, they're going to talk about stuff like this. What George Groves has to do, given that he has a decided hand speed advantage and he's the younger, fresher athlete, is he has to frame his speed better. He has to frame what he's doing better better. It's not enough to go in the ring like he did the first time and just be faster than Carl Frotch. No. He has to make a show of it. He has to turn it into something entertaining. Put another way, he has to educate the judges and the fans about the fact that his hand speed has given him control of the action in the ring. The kind of names he should be thinking about emulating. I believe the biggest one is Ray Leonard, especially the rematch of Ray Leonard's loss to Roberto Duran. Right? Leonard, like Groves, lost that first fight. Then, of course, we get to the second fight. Ray Leonard, like Groves, had the hand speed advantage on Roberto Duran. Had the foot speed advantage on Roberto Duran. Right? Seemed to be the better athlete. And just like with George Groves and Carl Frotz, Leonard was fighting a very cagey, very savvy veteran who might have been the better chess player than Ray Leonard. Right now, those of you who remember the fight, remember that Ray Leonard didn't just go in there and try to overwhelm Duran. Let me also say this too. I know it'll shake up some people. That fight's closer than you think. Right? Duran, before the no-moss, is doing some things in that fight. 
right? But the point is simply this. Leonard backs away at times, right? Leonard makes sure the fans understand that he's the faster person in foot speed. He's changing gears. You lose track of the speed difference if a guy's always throwing fastballs. Then every fastball looks alike. So you've got to mix it up. Right change up. Fastball. When the fastball comes, we the fans will say, oh, look at the speed on that. Right? Ray Leonard's doing things that aren't even required in the match. Right? He's stopping. He's pausing. He's posing. That's the kind of stuff George Groves has to do here. Right? Carl Frotch is a slow starter. George Groves early in the fight, quite frankly, should put on a show for us while winning the rounds. Right? He should dance around the ring. He has great legs. Why he didn't use them, you're going to have to talk to him and his trainer. They're the only people who know. But George Groves needs to think about Ray Leonard. I'll, I'll tell you another Ray Leonard fight. Ray Leonard, Thomas Hearns. Right now, that's one of the best fights I've ever seen. Just understand, Ray Leonard has Hearns hurt. But Ray wasn't a big puncher. Right? So Ray needed to show to the fans that he was in control of a very close fight. Right? If Thomas Hearns doesn't get knocked down, he may have won the decision in that fight. That fight's closer than you think. So Ray Leonard starts, and this is not needed to land punches, but it's needed to convince judges and fans. Ray Leonard starts shaking his right hand. Look at the film. It's masterful. He's stalking Thomas Hearns and he's shaking his right hand, making sure we all see it. He's educating us to the fact that he can land that right hand. And as Ray shakes the right hand, he then starts throwing it. He draws your attention to the punch. Then he starts throwing it on Thomas Hearns. So as you're watching the hand speed, you've been educated to appreciate the hand speed. Right? And so, apart from Ray Leonard, Groves needs to look at other guys who have educated us to the fact that they're the better athlete. They have the other guy time. He needs to think about the showmen in boxing. Right now, I'd say one of the dominant showmen is Paulie Malinaji. Right? Malinaji just has a little bit extra swag. He's not just landing jabs. He'll run over to you and bend and stuff like that. So as you're watching a fight, you're conscious that Paulie's a stylist. Right? Adrian Broner. Right? Broner might be a little bit too full of himself. But he has a certain swag in the ring. Right? When he's countering you, he'll look at you. So we, the fans, are saying, oh, look at that counter. You know what I mean? There's a bigger personality in the ring. That sucks you in to what he's doing. Roy Jones. Right? Guys who are back and they're looking flashy. They have that extra, you know, that extra step to entertain fans. Right? For the old timers, Vinny Pazienza. Right? These are showmen. Ali. Right? Keep in mind, the Ali shuffle is not just to confuse an opponent on exactly what Ali's going to throw next, right? Because you would think that, you know, what he's going to throw might be dependent on how his feet are set, right? If he's going to throw a hard right hand, he would want his left foot in front of it, right? But it's also to let the fans know that he has great legs, that whatever the other guy's doing, Ali's moving around the ring on his terms, Right? I want to see Benny Leonard to the real old-timers, right? the lightweight champion who wasn't just winning fights way back when, but was doing it with a certain style, a certain charisma. So George Groves, in my opinion, is making a huge mistake 
because the focus should be on his game, the loudness of his game. It shouldn't be on a pre-fight public argument with Carl Frotch. Understand, Carl Frotch fought like a champion in the first fight, whoever you think won the fight. Right? He got off. What's more championship level than getting up off the canvas against a worthy opponent and hanging in the fight? Overcoming things like deficits in athleticism. Right? And so what Groves needs to do is he also needs to look at Ray Leonard's entrance. I know this stuff sounds superfluous, but he needs to look at his entrance in the ring for his rematch with Duran. First fight, Ray Leonard comes in like, hey, where's the party? Hey, hey, right? Multicolored bells and whistles, right? Tassels. Second fight, Ray Leonard comes in wearing black trunks with just the word Leonard, right? You would have thought Ray Leonard was going to a funeral. Then the fight starts, and Ray's fight style is flashy, right? You want to bring the focus to your fight style, not some pre-fight hype where you're saying, I'm going to knock out the guy. Why raise expectations? Why? Don't call out a round so the fans are sitting there thinking, oh, is George Groves going to knock out Carl Frotch in the third round? Shouldn't be like that. It should be where you show up and you know you can go 100 miles an hour. The other guy tops out at 80. Right? If you bring your A game, the other guy cannot match you in hand speed and movement. Right? That's the reality of this fight. If George Groves comes in with his A game, Carl Frotch cannot match him in hand speed. And Groves knows he has a secret. I know this is controversial. But Groves knows he hits as hard as Carl Frotch. So if you're the faster guy with the same punch and you're fighting a guy who you know is a mathematician, who you know is dissecting your game moment to moment and making adjustments, why wouldn't you come out just like Ray Leonard did, keep the fight in the center of the ring, right? Don't be macho. You're not Ali. Don't lean on the ropes or be even close to the ropes so some bomber like Carl Frotch knows where to find you. No, you have the leg speed advantage. Why give that away? And while you're keeping it in the middle of the ring and while you're using your superior hand speed, why not draw the fans in? Let them understand that the fight's going the way you want. If you're landing a right hand, why not frame it? Bolo punch, right? Ray Leonard, bolo punch. Shake the hand before you throw it, Ray Leonard, right? Move your feet a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Glare at the guy right after the round, right? Ali type stuff. Put on a bit of a show if... If you land a punch and Carl Frotch backs away, right, scoot over there, kind of like with a little bit extra theater, like Paulie Malignaggi does. The point is simply this. What George Groves can't afford is a pedestrian fight. He can't just quietly beat Carl Frotch on the merits and expect a decision. He needs to recognize, whatever his game is, that Carl Frotch has charisma, right? Life's unfair in the charisma department, but Carl Frotch has charisma. We're interested in this fight because it involves Carl Frotch, right? So Groves needs to figure out how to do more of what he did at the start of the last fight he needs to change gears, change speeds, to educate us about his top end speed. As I said, you can't come out like he did last time and just try to do the same things at the same speed and expect Carl Frotch not to make adjustments and also expect us to appreciate the speed gap when you're not framing anything. 
right? What I want to do is I want to see him come out with a little bit of theater. Look at Carl Frotch. Bend at the waist. Come in. Throw some combinations. Flash some hand speed, right? Look like he's in control. Maybe even do a shuffle, right? Dance around Carl Frotch. If Carl Frotch is staying away laying traps, wave to him to come on in. You know, let's fight. Let's brawl. Then if he lands bombs on Carl Frotch, rather than try to close the show and empty the tank like he did the first time, he needs to look at Roy Jones' tapes. If he's on top, having dominated the early rounds, pace himself. Take his foot off the gas a little bit. We know Frotch has a great chin, right? Someone's going to say, oh, Frotch doesn't have a great chin. You know what? When Frotch gets dropped, whether it's Jermaine Taylor... Whether it's George Groves, he somehow finds a way to not only get off the canvas, but then to be competitive the rest of the fight. That's a great chin to me. That shows resilience. So, <clears throat> if I'm George Groves, I hurt Carl Frotch early. At a minimum, I put on a show for the fans. I'm not close to the ropes, right? I make sure people see my hand speed. If I have a winning formula, I hide that formula at different times. I'm not going to give a safe cracker like Carl Frotch the full show all the time so he can crack my code. Then I'm going to pace myself where if I come in, I knock him down, I look flashy, I win the first three rounds. Then I'm going to, in the fourth round, try to start the round fast, take some time off, pick my spots, make sure I end the round well. Right? I'm going to look at the crowd. I'm going to make sure they're involved. I'm going to make sure they're on my side. If the crowd starts yelling my name, I'm going to acknowledge it because I understand. I need the crowd on my side because they might impact the judges. Right? Then I need to make sure that when this fight gets to the 6th, 7th, and 8th rounds, I'm still with stamina. I haven't emptied the tank trying to make a statement. My statement's going to be winning the fight and taking the title. I don't need to do that by early knockout because if I don't get that knockout, then I'm finished in the later rounds. Right, so I hope George Groves thinks about putting on a show. I'm expecting him to win this fight. But I'm going to hedge the play with Carl Frotch by knockout because the one thing I know about Carl Frotch is that he's mentally tough, he's resilient, he's going to go for it every minute of this fight. He's not going to let some young kid come in, even if that young kid wins the first 10 rounds and convince him to give up. Carl Frotch has a puncher's chance. I like Groves to win the rematch, hedged with Frotch by KO. I'm expecting Frotch to be the favorite because he won the first fight. I believe that hedge is doable. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for coming by.